Hey everybody, my name is Yona. I am a fourth year student from CSPM and today I am doing the third part of the series of acing your externships. If you guys haven't seen, Diksha and I already posted part one and part two, so go, go check that out. I'm gonna leave, leave the link somewhere here and also in the description, we also have a ton of other videos that you can also see in the description as well. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the first point. Uh, first point being being organized with your notes, making fo folders for each program and what academics they go over. Essentially, for academics, um, if you guys have already started academics or people who have actually started externships or haven't yet, you know for the most part you get a set of articles usually that you're going to have to read for the next week or so. And you're going to have to talk about those articles, you're going to have discussions about them. So with each of those articles, it's important to at least write some notes down. Uh, make some highlights and then keeping those organized in a separate folder of articles that you read that month for that program. I, I know for myself I used Notability and I made a tab for each program and in each tab it had academics, notes, um, other important things that I can't remember on the top of my head right now uh, but it's important to keep those in track because you, you can find yourself uh, come interview season where they ask you a particular question about an article that they did want to go over uh, and it's probably going to be a high yield article and they're going to probably ask you like can you remember something about it can you talk about it I personally did not get asked that question but I know some friends who did so I'm just putting it out there and that's important for you guys to uh, keep track of especially with your notes as well um, number two write down memorable experiences from each program and the pros and cons Again, this goes along with the first point about making folders for each program. Um, in addition, you want to make those pros and cons lists for each program because um, the, not every program is, is perfect, right? And you're going to find that out as you go through each externship. Um, and some programs are suited or best suited for other people, you know? Uh, but that doesn't mean it's a bad program. You know? uh, so I, I would say just keep a list of pros and cons so that way when you are making that decision come, let's say interview season or when you're um, ranking your programs, you want to at least rank the ones that you felt you had more pros than cons and the ones that you felt better at. Uh, I think that's important. As well as the memorable experiences because I know for myself I've had, I was asked a few memorable experiences um, from my interviews and I wrote down those memorable experiences from each program so I just, I just remember to read back at those and this just, just tell them during the uh, during interviews uh, so the third point is plan out living and transport before each externship that is so crucial I know for myself I used furnished finder um, as well as Airbnbs a lot and I would book in advance at least a month ahead at least because um, you never know while prices are still good like a month before you could get discounts as well as I know for myself, I found places that were situated in the best area for me, uh, close to the proximity of the hospital. I think that was very important for me because I wanted to have a good living as well as uh, be close to the hospital if I ever was called in or something, or I also I didn't want to drive too far. Those were some of the things I was thinking about. And you could also talk to the host and tell them your situation as a medical student and describe to them, hey, this is a little bit expensive, it's a lot of, out of my budget, is there any way that you can make a discount? And sometimes I've actually gotten responses where they actually lowered the price for me. So that could be a nice thing for you guys to try to do. As well as transport, um, I booked all my flights in advance as well as um, my rides, my the cars I rented. I used an app called Toro uh, and that's important because Again, with that app, if you book at least 30 days before uh, the ride, you can get some discounts saved. So I really like that app. I think it was very convenient. I, you guys can use whatever app, but I really like that. I saved a lot of money through that app as well. Um, number four, get back to any questions you were asked and make sure you read up on it. Um, pretty self-explanatory. If you're asked a question and you don't know it, sit, just tell the doctor, Sorry, doctor, I just, I don't know the question at this time. I don't know the answer to that question right now, but I will make sure I'll get back to you tomorrow. And you wanna be prompt about that. You wanna, if you see the doctor the next day, make sure you go up to them if they have time, tell them what the answer to that question they asked you. And, and I would say read an article about it because 
you want to have some evidence to support your answer and it really just looks good on your end that you took the time to read one article and it shows them that you are really putting in the work to make sure you succeed so um, that's important uh, number five if you want to visit other programs make sure to ask um, if a program is not comfortable with that then don't visit again it's pretty self-explanatory right so I would say if you want to visit another program um, go about asking the resident first if and see what their policy is like if and the resident will pretty much be honest with you it'll be straightforward with you because residents for the most part are really nice about this stuff and they can either tell you hey it's it's okay don't worry about it you could definitely visit a program um, probably this week or something you maybe have to talk to director or something but we're pretty chill about it or it could be you know I'm not really sure you probably have to ask the director or it could be yeah we're not really comfortable with that if they say that don't do it don't take the risk if you visit another program and they told you not to visit or it's not really it's not really advised to visit then uh, other programs can talk uh, other directors can talk to each other you never know you don't want to be in that position it's not really great um, the sixth point read the OR room and help Yes, um, this is one of those skills that gets better over time. It's, it's, yeah, so there's, there's a mnemonic. I don't really remember a mnemonic. It's about just uh, fixing the lights, bringing uh, blankets, uh, bringing the gurney in, getting some supplies, getting the tourniquet ready. There's a lot of things that you can do beforehand to get the OR prep. So you want to look like a superstar again, right? So you want to catch all these things I, I again I can find that mnemonic I could probably leave it in the description for you guys to just make sure you have in your mind so you're having this checklist that you're getting ready prior to the uh, attending coming in it, because it looks really good on your end and also if the resident sees that you're doing all these nice little things they could they could remember that experience they will tell the attending that you're really on top of it tell the other residents so that looks really good as well as during the surgery I mentioned this before in the first video is like learning your instruments I, I think that's again something small right um, but that's pretty big uh, if you know your instruments and an attending or the surgeon is asking for a particular instrument and you're on it you know what the instrument is and you give it to them that looks really good you you are they, they don't like wasting time you're not wasting their time and they know you're learning and doing other things on the side to really make sure you're very productive during that setting so Learning these little things makes a big difference to make you look really good. Um, the seventh point being is the first day, first day figure out where things are, um, if you can. So I know I've posted this on Insta our Instagram stories where I would come at least two days before uh, the program and the, the day the right the day before starting my externship at that program. I would just figure where everything is at, like parking, where the building is at, um, what's the fastest way to get there. So I kind of did it, like I scoped out the area before just arriving the next day because it helped me save time and it helped me reduce my stress levels because I didn't want to be that guy who couldn't find the parking and then had to text one of the residents who I didn't meet in person yet about my situation that happened to me at my first externship program and I learned really quickly to never do that again so try to figure things out the day before if you can and it only takes probably one or two hours even less depending on uh, what you're doing that day and then the last point here this is an optional point but it's something that Diksha told me about and how sh other residents told her that it could be excessive is don't give extravagant gifts uh, yeah, I, I never experienced any of my co-externs giving extravagant gifts. Uh, Diksha has heard uh, from residents that externs have given extra, uh, extravagant gifts. I don't know what those gifts are, um, but you don't want to look like you're kissing up. I, I'm going to be straight up with you guys. You don't want to be looking like that. So you want to, again, your experience is solely dictated on how you treated people, how you interacted with people, just your overall experience. And um, one gift is not gonna make up for any wrongdoings you did, right? It's nice to leave a card, leave maybe some treats or something, you know, like little things. If if um, are, if the residents or, or the attendings are receptive to that, then yeah, totally do it. Um, but about extravagant gifts, I, I don't know if that's 
something I would have done. I didn't do anything like that. I, I always left like a small card or a thank you. I think that was um, good enough for my standards because I also, again, I, I never wanted to look like the type of person who was really trying to kiss up. Um, so that's my list here. I uh, ho Hopefully, yeah, this is the last part of the series. So without all, with taking all of that into account, I think that's like 22 things we talked about throughout the three parts of these series. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it's really helpful for you guys to just be rock stars as you go through externships. I, we try to cover as much as possible through the, through the series. Um, so let us know if you really enjoyed this video, leave a comment section down below, or if you have any other advice um, as you're learning going through externships, or if you've already been through externships, leave it down below. I think that's really important for future students to look at these videos and say, okay, okay, that's something that we can, we can also look at. So that's important. Um, uh, well, again, we're gonna be posting more videos in the future. So uh, like and subscribe to our channel because we, that means a lot to us uh, because we always like helping you guys. Um, with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe out there. Pod Squad signing out. Take care, guys.